said that Mal Pugh was, was named. Fans voted for her as his MVP uh, of this match. For for you, is there is do you agree with that? Or are you giving the MVP to somebody else in, in a game like this? I mean, I think Mallory Pugh is a good pick. I mean, that's a it's most often a forward. If you're asking me my opinion on MVP, it's Naomi Gurma. It's you're yeah. asking my opinion. That's why I'm on this podcast and I love it. I think it should have been Naomi Gurma. I think if you look at at this game and how many big stops she made, how composed she was, how she kept the United States in this game, offensively breaking lines, defensively 1v1, sliding in. Her positioning was fantastic. I mean, it's Gurma all day. Even if you couple the games, right, from the first match to this match, I think Gurma still played well in the first match, and and this one was even better. I mean, Naomi Gurma is my MVP for this match and for the pair of friendlies, honestly. I'm with you. Uh, listen, we talk about it all the time. Lisa, we love defense on this show. We love to talk about the, the center back specifically. We, we always try to show love to the keepers as well. Um, I'm with you. This was just another confirmation for me. And that's probably how we should close it out. I mean, we I, I feel like we started at the top of this episode talking about the starting 11s, seeing somebody like Girma getting that second consecutive start, and then – having another game that she just had against Germany. I thought some really good showings to close yep. out 2022. And this is a player, this is a player that got integrated with this team mid year, you know, all of, all of the injuries that we've been talking about, all of uh, you know, the rotation, the players that we've had to see kind of come into these player pools because of those injuries. Guillermo was one of those players. She ended up, uh, getting inserted into this into these camps uh, during those June friendlies, just ahead of the Concacaf W Championship, and has not missed a step with this team ever since. No, she hasn't, and I, and I think that it's so it's so impressive to see the growth of this player. I mean, MV uh, like Rookie of the Year, uh, Defender of the Year in the NWSL. It's she's definitely my MVP for this. Um, and and this is how the United States closes out their 2022, right? They, they end on a high, a 2-1 win over Germany. Um, and now they look ahead to next year, which is a World Cup year. And they do play a pair of friendlies in January against New Zealand in New Zealand, the first time the United States will travel to New Zealand. But um, I think that it's important to reflect on this match and how the United States closed out this year because it was – a trying year for this team with injuries that they faced with different players coming in and out with the competition that they face. But um, so many fans talk about why is the United States playing Uzbekistan? Why are they playing Colombia? Why aren't they always playing teams like England, Spain, Germany, top ranked teams. But this, this year they did, they played against England. They played against Spain in, in, in Europe, and then they played against Germany, number three ranked team right now at home. And there was a lot of questions asked of this United States team, and I think that is exactly what they need to do heading into a World Cup year. Uh, this fall was perhaps the best World Cup preparation that the United States has ever had heading into a World Cup year. Um, the United States has not played four straight friendlies against a top 10 ranked team with all games at home since the spring of 20. 12. Um, it, this fall schedule also represents the first time since 2009 that the United States had faced the European champion right after the tournament. That was in Eng that was England. Um, United States and Germany are both the only two teams that have held the number one spots in the FIFA rankings since that ha the FIFA rankings have been out for women in since 2003. So the competition against the United States and Germany are or two of the top teams in the entire world. And and usually leading into a World Cup year, uh, right now is CONCACAF tournament usually. But because of how the Olympics and the pandemic, like the ripple effect of scheduling is still happening. And because of that, there's been a lot of downsides to everything that has happened. But because of that, the Euros were, being, were able to be played this year. CONCACAF happened for qualifiers in July. The European qualifiers happened earlier this year. So it opened up the FIFA window for teams to be available like Spain, like England, and like Germany for them to have this competition against them. And it is perhaps the best World Cup prep that the United States has ever had heading into a World Cup year. 
I think with, look, eight months, we keep talking about eight months leading up to the 2023 World Cup, uh, it sort of feels like now was the window to try to get these types of games in for this specific pool of players. Because you mentioned the 2023 January camp, how that's going to be held in New Zealand. I would imagine that there may be some players who have been dealing with injury throughout 2022 who may start to get, you know, woven into or rotated into these types of camps in 2023. And if they are able to join up in in January, I think you're going to want to see those players and get them as much time to get reacclimated, whether that is somebody like a Tierna Davidson or somebody like a Casey Kruger or somebody like a Kelly O'Hara, Emily yeah. Sandy. The list is endless. There's, there's a big list of, of players, right? Casey Kruger, Kelly O'Hara, Emily Sonnet, um, Tierna Davidson, Lynn yeah. Williams. Those are players who are maybe closer, you know. Lynn Williams awesome expected Lynn. to be back for January camp selection. She was already training with Kansas City current yeah. in the NWSL at, at ahead of the championship. Um, and then you even look at players like Katarina Macario, Kristen Press. Um, they should be back on the field by late February. I mean, no, that's not the January camp, but hey, that's a pretty good indication of, of where this team is going. So the injured players are only getting healthier and they're only going to return to this roster, which will make the competition for those positions that much harder and stronger. And I do think we could see a lot of them in New Zealand in January. It's something that we're going to keep an eye on because 2022 for the United States women's national team is over. That is a wrap. That is all she wrote. They ended the skid and they are closing out 2022 with a win. We will see them once more in January camps in New Zealand in 2023.